background. That's my cat. <laughs> I can't control that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So we're going to start with iPad calligraphy. And I use this program on the iPad called Procreate. Um, it has got this icon here. So it's a bottom. Okay. And when you open Procreate, you would come to this screen. This is the um, main screen. And um, I'll, I'll start off by sharing how to set up your canvas because um, with the setting up of canvas, there are typically two different um, outputs. Well, there are a couple of different outputs, but there are two main ones, uh, which are very important depending on the type of um, purpose of the artwork that you're gonna um, use it for. So you could be using it for printing, you could be using it for posting on social media. So you need um, different sorts of um, outputs uh, for your uh, artwork. So to with the setting up of the canvas, I start off with this plus button at the top corner. Okay, and then um, they, they usually come with a couple of presets. So they have presets like A4 size, you know, screen size, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but sometimes you you want a, a preset. I'm uh, sorry, a, a custom canvas for the type of work that you're trying to create. So say for example, if I'm trying to create an A4 piece today, um, what I'll do is I'll I'll type. Sorry, I'll tap on this little icon, little plus folder icon at the top corner, and then um, basically you can type in the uh, dimensions. So before I even do that, what I'll do is I start off with by looking at the color profile. Okay, and then there will be two different tabs. So if CMYK tab and the RGB tab. Okay, so for a CMYK tab, it's good for when you're trying to use an artwork for printing. So usually if you need to print your artwork, you know, you're going to use an artwork for Christmas cards printing, you know, you, you, you definitely need a CMYK output. Um, if you're just going to post it on social media, you're going to post it on Facebook. Um, it's all going to go, um, this artwork is just going to be a digital artwork. It's not going to be printed. Then RGB is good enough. Okay, so um, I'm going to use RGB today because I'm going to print this. And then um, my dimensions, um, like I said, I'm going to use an A4 size dimension. So I like to work with millimeters. I don't know what sort of, um, uh, you know, if you work in mm, cm, inches, you know, in, in your own country, I like to work in millimeters. So um, let's see, that's 210 and then 297. So this is A4 size. Okay, and then the DPI, yeah, you would want at least a minimum of 300 for a good resolution. And you can see if I have a lower DPI, I can have more layers for my artworks. Okay, I'll talk about what layers actually mean. Um, but for now, we're just going to settle with 300. Okay, and we have 57 um, layers to work with. Okay, so um, that's about it for now. Okay, so that's setting up the canvas. And now we have a new canvas. Okay, so with a new canvas, um, it depends on the sort of uh, layout. So it doesn't really matter if it's portrait or landscape because um, if you look on screen with my hands waving on screen, there's one little corner. Um, basically you can use your fingers and you can Use two of your fingers, your thumb and your index finger, and you can twist it. So you can twist your work around. So it becomes a landscape mode. Okay, so um, with this, this is a very good um, gesture to, to learn. Basically with just these two fingers, you can zoom in your artwork and you can zoom out. So to zoom in, it's basically um, pushing your index and your thumb outwards like this. Okay, and then zoom out is pushing inwards. Okay, so that's the basic basic gesture to, to remember. Okay, all right. So um, with this canvas, I'll start off by, you know, going through a couple of important features to go through because these features would be very, very helpful for us to get started with. 
The first one is um, the Lias function that we talked about just now. Okay, the Lias function is um, basically here. Okay, you can see the top right hand corner, there's a two square icon here on top. Okay, and if you press the class icon, you're going to get multiple, multiple layers. Okay, so what all these layers do is it helps separate your artwork. And the, the layers at the bottom of the list are basically um, things that will be kept at the bottom of your artwork. So if you think of um, your artwork like, um, mm, like buildings, okay, layer one is level one. When you're on level one, it's right at the bottom of, of the floor, right? So see, so I'm going to do a demo here so you can see how it works. If I'm going to put a random stroke here, let me just change this. I'll go through this in a bit. Okay. So I have a random stroke right here. Okay. And that is done on layer one and it will show up on layer one only. Okay. If I do this on layer two, okay, everything I do on that layer would be just kept in that layer level two. Okay, all right, so if I delete this layer, I'll talk about the gestures in a bit. If I delete the second layer, the first layer is not affected. All right, so this is very important to help us separate the sort of artworks we want to create because sometimes we just want to color a certain portion of our artwork. We don't want to color all the different layers and we might want to move just one single word or letter in, in our calligraphy. So this layer um, function is actually really important. All right, so um, so let me just demo how to delete the layers. To, to delete the layers, you basically take your pen or your finger. Okay, swipe to the left. Okay, when you swipe to the left side, you will see a delete button that's red in color and it's gone. Okay, so basically you're saying for all these, swipe to the left, delete, or when you have multiple different layers like this, um, which I don't want, what I typically do is I use my two fingers, okay, I um, combine them together, so you see layer, layer 7 and layer 4, I'm just going to combine them together by swiping them together like this, okay, so you can see this, and they're combined. Okay, they're combined in one single layer and I can just delete them. Oh, because this is the base layer. So we always need one basic layer. Just a second. Okay. I'm gonna merge three layers and then delete them. Okay, so that's a quick way of deleting layers that you don't need at all. Combine them and delete them. Okay, so that is um, deleting layers. You can also um, toggle the visibility of the layers. So here's an example. Okay, so I've done this random stroke on layer two. So if I uncheck this box over here, it disappears. Okay, so this allows us to work with very clean areas. Um, and it's very important. I'll show you guys later when it comes to the actual calligraphy, why this toggle on and off is quite important in our work. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete that for now. Okay, and um, I'll show you the next function. Uh, this one here, that looks like an eraser, basically is an eraser. <laughs> Okay, so this, if you tap on this and you, um, you know, erase and it will be gone. Okay, um, you can toggle the, the size of the eraser at the side. Okay, that increases the brush size and decreases the brush, uh, brush size. So usually I, I work with a big brush when I'm erasing. Okay, um, this hand tool is a smudge tool. I'll talk about that later. It's not as important right now. Um, we have this brush tool. Okay, this brush tool is the essence of um, our work. All right, so this brush tool for calligraphy, um, basically for the brushes that's already in Procreate, there are a couple of different types of brushes that you can use. I usually go for 
um, the ones under the calligraphy category and I look for script right at the bottom here. Okay, it could be at different spots on, on your iPad. Um, the script one is really good for me. I, I, I quite like it because it gives very clean lines. Um, I, I, do, I do know that there are a couple of um, artists that create their own brushes and they sell them on, on different platforms. You can do that as well and import them into the Procreate program. Um, I like to stick with the, the, whatever that's been given to me. It's good enough. <laughs> okay, so um, the script one. Um, and basically all the different brushes here, they can be used. So I'm going to try the chalk one okay, just to show an example. And here you can do thick and thin lines. So just like you, uh, when you're doing your calligraphy writing, when you press hard on the screen with a pen, if you press hard, it creates um, a thicker stroke. And if you have a light hand, it'll be a thin stroke. So just a couple of um, demonstrations here. Thin stroke, thick stroke. Okay, so this one is, uh, oops, this one is done with pressure. Okay, all right, so we'll just erase all these. So we have thin and thick strokes. Um, before you actually do that, I like to check the brush size as well. So I'll toggle at the left side here. It could be on the right side for your, for your own iPad. Um, Toggle the brush size to, to find the, you know, the minimum thin stroke that you actually like. If it's all the way to the bottom, the lines are actually quite thick. You can barely see on my screen right now. Um, but it is there. It's here. It's here. It can be very thin, thin brush and then thick. So this is a thin and thick with a much smaller brush size. Okay, so you have to toggle around with the brush size to find it, the sort of um, thickness you want. Um, and this would be, oops, this would be the minimum, and this could be your maximum size for your um, writing. Okay, so um, I don't like to work really big. I like to work somewhere around like maybe like this size. That's eleven percent, eleven to fifteen percent brush size, and that's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm going to delete all these. All right, okay. So if you're following through with um, your Procreate and iPad, um, we can work with the script brush. Okay, let's use that. All right, okay. So the next thing is before you even start calligraphy, you need guidelines. You, it's really hard to write on Procreate like this without having any guidelines. So I'm going to teach you how to create those guidelines yourself. Okay. All right. So within Procreate, there's actually this um, function called texture in your brush, under your brush, um, a category, category called textures, and we have grids inside. Okay. Find that grid, and then um, it's basically a brush which you can create across your whole piece. So you have your basic grid for, to, for you to uh, work within Procreate, which is very helpful. Of course, um, I understand that, you know, depending on the type of calligraphy script that you're going to use, you might be working with different calligraphy ratios. So some of you do two is to one is to two calligraphy ratio, some three to three ratios, right? Um, okay, so for now, let's just work with this. Okay, I'm going to show you a, um, a different way of, of working. So right now, this brush, uh, with this brush, the grids are in this size. What if I want to work with a grid size that's much, much larger than what you're seeing right now? Okay, so what you do is you go to brush and your grid. Okay, tap, tap on your grid so you can see all the different um, settings for your grid. Okay. Okay, so with that, you want to go in. Oops. And work with the scale. So if you look on the Brush Studio, green, under the category green, and then we have this thing called the scale. Okay, with the scale, you can increase the size of the grid 
So right now I've increased a, a grid size and with the same brush size, I'm creating a much bigger grid to work with. Okay, oops, sorry, like this. I have a much bigger grid to work with. So um, that is actually really handy if you need multiple different sizes um, for your, your grids. I like to work a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna change that back. So I'll go back to 20% for my scale. Okay, I'm going to delete this, create a new layer, and then I'll have my base layer for my grid. Okay, the grid is just there to help us with our writing. Okay. All right, so the next thing is to create um, different types of ratios for our guidelines in, in Procreate. So um, when it comes to creating guidelines, I like to use this brush here, um, ink, okay, ink. And you can look for one that's called fine tip. All right, with the fine tip, um, you can basically draw lines on the grid like this, okay? But let me just show you how to do that. Um, first, let's go to layers. Okay, add a new layer. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, with on a new layer, this would be our grid. So I can rename this. I tap on the the name of the layer, and rename rename this. Um, I'm gonna call this. Oops. Uh, guidelines. Okay, I'm going to call this guidelines. And then with this one, um, our layer two is the basic grid. So I'm just going to name that so you guys are not confused. Basic grid. Okay, so we have, we have two different layers. Okay, so to create my own guidelines on Procreate, um, for my basic grid, I can actually change the opacity of it. So I'll tap on this. In and there's this um this long bar here that's for op opacity. I can toggle this so it's a little bit lighter on my on um on my canvas. Okay, so right now it's on twenty five percent for my basic grid. Okay, and then tap your guidelines uh, layer. Okay, so you're working. So right now you're working with on the guidelines layer. Okay, so to draw a straight line across the, the whole canvas, um, if you're just freehand drawing, it's gonna be really hard, right? So um, one of the, the trick to drawing a straight line on Procreate is to um, start from wherever you wanna start, okay? And you can go anywhere you want and you end on a spot where you want and you hold it there. Oops. Hold it there, and you have a line there. Okay, so for this one, you want to do it close to the grid, the grid line that you have there that creates a very straight line. Okay, I'm just gonna do it nice, nicely. Okay, so I have my first line there. Okay, and then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see better. All right, and then I'm gonna do one more. Um, basically with this, if I want to duplicate the same line, I can just duplicate this like that. So you can go to your layers, swipe to the left, and then duplicate. Okay. Okay. So once you've duplicated the, the layer, you have a new layer called guidelines as well. So what I do with this is I tap on the, um, this cursor icon at the side. It's a, it's called a move tool. And it moves whatever that we're, that we're working with. And that creates another straight line for us, which um, I'm going to place it on the, on the line of the grid. Nicole, there's a question. Uh, how to use the new layer without right, so the I'm going to do this um, another time. One more time. So right now I'm going to create a two is, two is to one is to two guide sheet. Nicole. 
Nick. Okay, so that's one for the D sender. Nicole. And then I'm going to duplicate the guidelines again. Swipe to the left. Duplicate this. And then press the cursor tool. Hello, Nicole. Can you hear me? And move, use your finger and move the underline um, all the way to two boxes above. Somewhere around there. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you this. So on this, we have two, one, two ratio for file calligraphy writing. Okay, now you think, why would you want to work on this when you have a grid at the bottom? Okay, this is actually really um, handy to have because sometimes we're not um, entirely working on against the grid. You know, the grid is static. It's throughout this whole piece. Um, when I'm doing a calligraphy piece, I might be writing within this space. And sometimes I might want to move my piece somewhere else. So my guide sheets can, my guidelines that I've create, just created can move together with it. Okay, so um, let me just show you how I organize my layers. So with the four different guidelines that I've created, um, I basically take, press on the guideline, hold it, and bring it to your new group. Is anyone confused about that part? Okay, let me, let me just do that again. All right, so tap on the first guideline layer. Okay, hold it and find the second guideline. So right now you can see that there is a um, blue highlighted box around it. Okay, drop that layer on it. It creates a new group. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest. Drag them into the groups. Okay, so I've so right now I have a new group of guidelines like this here, which I can toggle on and off. Okay, I'm gonna rename this as guidelines. Guidelines two is two, one is two, two. Oops. Let me just erase this bit here. Okay. All right. So now we have one, two, three, four, four lines for our calligraphy practice. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to remove the basic grid at the background. And we have a standard um, 212 guide sheet here. Okay. Um, so how do you um, create, how do you actually use this? So when you have all the layers grouped together in one single group, when you tap on your um, move tool, you basically can move them around wherever you want on your paper. It's, it's very handy because sometimes you might have um, a piece of writing like this that's, that's meant to be right here and you might need another guide sheet because your next writing is somewhere around here. So it's actually really helpful for um, artwork layouts, for example. So creating this simple guidelines are actually, you know, re really helpful. Okay, so let's just work with the first group of guidelines we have here. Okay, and let's just do a couple of different um, exercise. Um, so we go with our calligraphy brush. So calligraphy category, let's look for the script brush. Okay. And then you um, can toggle this brush size a little. Let's see for this size. Just a moment, let me just 
try the brush size that's good for this. Okay, all right. So to start with our calligraphy writing, okay, the first thing you need to do is to create a new layer. So you tap on the, the plus icon and create a new layer. This layer would be our writing layer. Okay, um, the concepts of layer is actually very, it's, it's basically the same thing in programs like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. So if you master this, um, you, you, you know, you sort of got the concept of how um, Adobe um, Photoshop and Illustrator actually works. So the writing layer is actually on top. So that means that my writing is, if I write across my guidelines, it's layered on top, okay? But if I move my writing layer below my gui guidelines, you can see that the guidelines are showing up. So the, the guidelines are on top, okay? So for practice, um, we try to keep the writing layer on top of our guide sheets, okay? And then with our script brush, I'm currently on 5% brush size. You can, you can toggle around and see which works for you. Um, and when I start with my calligraphy, um, iPad calligraphy writing, I like to zoom all the way in. I don't like to work in, you know, so small. It really helps to zoom all the way in and work much bigger. Okay, and if you can see the screen where I'm holding my pen, um, I'm holding it uh, like like normal actually. I'm, I'm not holding it like my calligraphy pen. Okay. And when I when I'm moving my um my fingers, I'm actually um placing my palms on my iPad and I'm moving my fingers quite a bit like this. Okay, so for example, if I'm doing a thin line, I would be going upwards like this. Okay, zoom all the way in and, and try to work with um, this movement first. So this movement, okay, this first one that we're trying out, um, I'm actually anchoring my palm on the iPad and using my fingers to help me. Okay, there are a couple of different movements to practice. So this one is finger movement, palms on the iPad, Thin line, no pressure, and then just move all the way up within the small space inside here. Okay, um, so this is finger movements. Okay, and then the next one that I use very often in iPad is actually my whole arm movement. So I'm actually gliding across my whole screen as I write like this. So for example, if I'm trying to create an oval shape within this space, I'm zooming all the way in. And if you look on the screen where my, my hand is there, okay, I'm trying to create an oval shape. Oops, let me create an oval shape. Okay, you can see how my, my whole my whole palm and hand is actually moving across the screen. I'm not just doing this, okay, because by doing this, you're, you're limiting your the spaces that you can work with. So um, if it helps, you can place your arm on the table and glide. So your anchoring point would be this little muscle here on, on your arm, okay, and then so this one is the, oops, oval. Okay, so you would have seen me do this undo stroke. So to do that, okay, if you, if you did something wrong, let's say like this, oops, you've got a little kink in there. So to undo this step, just use um, two fingers, tap on the screen, and that and undoes everything that you have done there. So 
I did something wrong, then two fingers, tap, and it's gone. Okay, if you want to redo that action, three fingers, you're gonna tap with your three fingers. Okay, so undo two fingers, redo three fingers. All right, so this is a very uh, one of the very important gesture to, to master in, in Procreate. Okay. So this one, the second practice would be arm movement. So you can do your ovals within the space. If you don't have an iPad, then you can um, use a pointed pen and write on paper. <laughs> it doesn't help to, um, it, well, it, it's okay to do more pointed pen, pointed pen practice or brush calligraphy practice as well. Okay, so um, for me, as I'm looking at this, you know, right now, as I'm doing this, I feel that my brush size is a little bit too big because um, the oval that I like is, you know, typically a little bit thinner than this. So I'm going to reduce my brush size. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to do my ovals again. Okay, this is more like the oval that I enjoy. Okay, so this is reduced brush space. All right. Okay, so with um with brush, sorry, with iPad calligraphy, there are a couple of basic strokes as well. Same thing. So we're going to go through them. So if you ovals, we have the underturns. So let's do the underturns. You look like this. Okay, the underturns look like this. So if you see the screen um, with my hand movements, I am, you can do this. Okay, if you look at this one here, I'm anchoring my palm on the iPad. So it's actually a little bit difficult. And you see all the wobbly lines up happening here. So the next one I'm going to do would be my full arm. Release pressure. And oops, move up. Okay, so the lines are a little bit more confident as I'm doing this one here compared to this, which, which is a little bit wonky. I think with um, iPad calligraphy, it boils down to the type of style that you want to do at the end of the day. Say if you're trying to do something that is um, more like copper plate looking, then of course, um, you know, these tiny things and details would make a huge difference in the final output of your artwork. But if you're trying to do something more modern calligraphy and you're not too fussed about all these, you know, wobbly lines that much, then that's okay. That's fine. You don't have to be so strict on yourself okay so um but if you want a really precise sort of look i think the arm movement for ipad calligraphy actually um, changes the whole thing and it, it gives you very confident and nice lines okay so um next one we have under turns then we can do the over turns as well so the over turns we start with a thin line so there's no pressure if you can see on screen, I'm actually not holding like, I'm holding my pen like a calligraphy pen. I'm actually holding my pen at the side, like this as I write. Okay, it's a very different sort of pen hold compared to calligraphy. Um, you could hold it very differently. You could hold it like this and then do this. Oops. You could hold it like a calligraphy pen and, and, and do this, you know whatever floats your boat. It's not a calligraphy pen anymore. So um, if it works for you, then that's okay. I like to hold it at the side, like how we um, how, like how we do brush calligraphy. So we start off with a thin line first. And then we slowly put pressure on the pen, press on the screen harder, move down. We have an overturn. Okay, I'm going to do that again, in line, turn, press a bit harder, 
Come down. Nick, can you hear me? Nicole? Nicole? Let me just write some notes down. So this is under 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. The next one, we're going to do the um, compound curve. All right, so the compound curve, it looks like this. Can you go back to my calligraphy brush? Okay. Okay, this is how a compound curve looks like. So to do this, you would have to thin line, no pressure on the pen, so just move the pen up, turn, no pressure, and then at this point I start putting pressure as I come down. So press the pen as you come down, release pressure, and then come back up again. Oops. I do that with my full, full arm. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time. Thin, thin, turn, put pressure on the pen, release pressure on the pen. And then move upwards towards the top line. Okay, I'm going through this with the um, assumption that some of you might have done some sort of pointed pen or brush pen calligraphy. If you have not um, have any experience in that, um, let Dorothy know. So I can go through what all these different lines are so you're not too confused. Okay. Um, Yep. Okay. All right. So that is compound curve. And then we can do the ascender loop, the dreaded ascender loop. <laughs> so with ascender loop, there are different, I, I think there are different looks to it. Um, we can start from the, this line here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so um, we start from this line here, what we call the waist line, and then create a loop shape, and then turn over. Um, I like to do this with my sender loops. So I um, you know, like to do the thin line all the way and turn over, and then I start adding pressure after that. At this point, then I add pressure as I come down. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this in you know, multiple different steps. So it's not as smooth. So let me just do one with a full arm pressure, sorry, full arm movement. Okay, something like this. So we have the ascender loop. You can do this multiple times. <clears throat> if it helps, you can look at how I do this on the screen with my hand. So you can see the movement of how I move my, my hand against the, the iPad screen as you do this stroke. And, and as you look at that, you might also want to look at the speed that I'm doing this. Nicole, Oops. Nicole, can you hear me? Hi, Nicole. 
Okay, so you're, you're not actually moving that fast. You're not doing, you're not doing this. You know, it's not a one, two, done. You're not done yet. <laughs> okay, it's, it's pretty much as slow as, um, as you, you would do for calligraphy. Can you hear me, Nicole? <laughs> I think you cannot hear us. Just a second. Ah, there we go. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Cannot hear me. Oh, okay. Maybe look in the chat. Chat. Can you look inside the chat? Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of questions. I think she's actually writing on the screen. Um, you are not. Okay, because my, um, I'm not, I can't hear. Hold on. Yeah. Um, I think my earpiece is not connecting. Slide just a second. Sorry about that. Um, okay, technical problems. I can't get to the part where I see my settings. Hmm. Where can I change my settings? Hmm. Okay, I'll stop the screen share for a bit first. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. But need um, a shape source that's a little bit different. So right now it's a circle. I think there is one here that I bought this brush. It's from, I can't pronounce this, his handle. Half APX. <laughs> Half APX. So his brushes are actually good if you want the square cut. Okay, so um, but I think it's just a couple of dollars, like two or three US dollars for his brushes. Um, and you can see a difference in the brush um, type. So I just demo that. You can see there's a there's a square cut um on top. So yeah. So with that, um, you would have to find the, the correct brush for this if you want square cut. Um, the, the script, unfortunately, wouldn't allow you to create that square cut look. Um, the, you know, to make up for that, sometimes what I do is, um, let me just show, show you my workaround for that. So I'm going back to the script brush. Okay, so say if I'm trying to do a under turn like this. Sorry, oh, yeah, under turn. Okay, and so there's a top that's pointy. Sorry, and let me just. So right now this is how the underturn looks like, right? Um, and it's round. So what I'll do is I just come back in and just color in. <laughs> it's just like how you do for your, you know, pointed pen calligraphy. If it's if you you can't create that square tip, then you go at, go back and color color it in. Um, same thing for for iPad if. You don't want to buy a brush that costs you dollars, then you have to do it manually. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me just get that back. Erase that. Okay. So next question is how to add slanted guidelines. All right. So um, I usually freehand, but if you want to add <laughs> slanted guidelines, um, okay. So what I've done here is I have duplicated one of the guidelines that, that were in um, our 212 guide sheets. Okay, I've duplicated this. Let me just rename this as slant. Okay, so with this, um, if you tap on the move tool, okay, if you tap on the move tool for that layer, and there's this little green thing on top. It allows you to change the rotation of the of the um, of the line that you have created. Okay, so if you realize that if you started off with this um, this line here, it automatically says that it's um, on ninety degrees or some somewhere around there. 
Right. So you you sort of have to like um find that angle that gives you a um whatever calligraphy slant that, that you're looking for. So say for example, this is the baseline. Then this should be say 57 degree angle or whichever calligraphy angle that you're looking for. So you you've got to sort of shift the, the slant to that angle. Let me delete this. Okay, but if you're looking for a general slant and you're not too fussed about um the very specific angle that you're working with, then um you know you can just find a random angle that you think more or less look at 57 degree angles or 53, or 53 degree angle and work with that. For me, I, I, I usually sort of um, freehand with my iPad calligraphy. If you are very particular about the angle, then you have to do some calculations for your slides. Okay, so just gonna leave it there for this. Another question, Nick, do you use streamline function? Um, yes and no. Okay, so the streamline function is actually really um, good for people that are completely new to the Procreate um, program. So what the streamline function does is, okay, so this is a standard one. What the streamline function does is if you start with a thin and thick line, it smooths out your lines for you. You know, it, it looks pretty smooth right now. Okay, I'm gonna show you an, another example of um, one that's not streamlined. So this is on 72%. Um, if I don't streamline it, so now it's none. Oops. Yeah, I'm, I'm intentionally doing this so you can see. It doesn't smooth out all these lines for you that are kinky there. So it, you, you see all these like little kinks on top and even your thick lines have um, little kinks in there. So you can try that out on your Procreate and, and see um, you know, if you like more control with your writing or you, you prefer the, the system to help you smooth out your lines for you. Um, generally, I would recommend um, using Streamline if you're completely new to this program. It really saves you a lot of time. And that's basically the whole um, you know, unique selling point of this Procreate program. It helps you create really nice strokes without too much effort. <laughs> Um, but for me, it depends on the type of work that I'm trying to create. Uh, if I am, say, for example, for today's demo, I'm, I'm using Streamline because it's just much quicker to um, do the demonstration for you guys. We don't have that much time. <laughs> um, but say if I'm trying to create a, a, an actual artwork uh, for myself and I'm very particular about you know where the thick lines are going to land or where my thin lines are going to be, then I will, I will turn off the streamline function because I have a lot more control on, uh, on, on where I want the thick and thin lines to be. If for example, something like this, I can keep my thick lines at the bottom of the, of the stroke. Um, if I want that, um, if I do this with streamline, you can see how the lines are smoothing out for me. Okay, so it's it's really up to you if you you want to um, have more control or, or not with with the program. Um, yeah, so it's a personal preference thing. So I'm going to delete all these and then we can move on. Any more questions? Nothing so far. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So let me just move on with this bit here. So the ascender loop. Then we can go back and continue our descender loops. So. Okay, I'm gonna decrease my brush size. Okay, 
So I'm going to zoom in to work with um, the descender loop. So we're going to start with start on the waistline. Press hard to create um, a thick stroke. Press hard. And as you move down, slowly release the pressure on your screen. Oops. Slowly release the pressure on the screen. And then turn back in and come back up. Oh, I'm not using Streamline for this. Okay, Benny. <laughs> yeah, then you can come back in. Touch out on the square cuts there. Yep. Mm, let me turn on the streamline because that's a lot faster to work with. Oh, it's there. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll do that again. So I start on the waistline. So this is the waistline. Okay, and then ignore the slant. Um, so you start on the waistline, press on your screen hard. Okay, as you move down, slowly release pressure as you move down, loop back up and come back to the baseline. Okay, so you have your descender loops. Okay, so um, we have covered compound curve ascender loops, ovals. You can do right curves as well, which is the entry stroke. So the entry stroke would be, it looks like this, it's thin line all the way. So we start from the baseline. You can see how I zoom my writing all the way in when I'm working with all these um, strokes. Start from the baseline and you create a curve shape. Hmm. Okay, with the um, right curve, I usually imagine like an oval shape and there's this like little curve shape at the bottom quadrant and that helps you imagine how it looks like. Um, so you wouldn't want a right curve that looks like that, or you wouldn't want a right curve that looks like that. You know, that's too long. <laughs> yeah, so imagine the um, a slanted oval, but the bottom quadrant of it. Remove this. I'm gonna do it one more time, right curve. Okay, so my movement on screen is, I'm actually moving my whole hand. I'm not just using my fingers. Um, using your fingers is fine um, if the distance is small enough. But usually when we're working on Procreate, uh, you realize that we're actually working a lot bigger than, than we're used to. So having to master that arm movement practice is actually quite, um, quite beneficial to get very nice lines on on this digital platform <clears throat> okay so this is an interesting part so with this we've done a couple of basic strokes right um and you know with calligraphy uh the essence of say for example copper plate calligraphy is combining all the basic strokes together for our lowercase letters for example if we combined the oval with the underturn we get a letter a Right, so here is what's interesting. So we have a writing layer here right now, okay? And what you can do is to actually pick out the, the, the practices that you have done and combine them together. So what I mean by that is, for example, um, we have a novel shape here, okay? I'm gonna use this ribbon tool on top. Sorry, I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit. There's a ribbon icon. 
this ribbon tool, okay, it's actually what we call a selection tool. And um, what I'm going to use is a freehand function here. I'm going to circle this, circle my oval that I've done there. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste. So I have a new layer from this selection I've done there with, with just that oval that I've done. So it's actually quite interesting. If you've done a, a full um, page of um, ovals and basic strokes, you can sort of select the, the one that you think is the most perfect looking one and just cut that out and, and, and form a new layer from it. Okay, so I have this one here that's called the oval. Oval, and then I'm going to move that out. Okay, so with the move tool, I can move my oval out. And then I'm going to select the underturn here as well. So I'm going to go back to my writing layer, use the ribbon tool, and select the underturn that I want. Okay, and then copy and paste. So that's a bottom bar here. I'm going to copy and paste. Let me just zoom this out a little bit. Okay, so I have a new layer of underturn. So I'm going to select my underturn and move it up. And I'm trying to form a letter A here. It's a little bit like cheating, but you know, that's the point of procreate. <laughs> that's the must. And yeah, that's, that's the wonders of technology. So they have a letter A. Okay, so basically, you know, you know the basics of um, all the lowercase um, letters. Um, and you can quick, quick create very quick ways of um, recreating your lowercase letters by just combining your, your basic strokes and seeing how they look like. So you don't necessarily have to do, you know, a letter A on your guide sheet anymore. You can just sort of copy and paste again and again, um, however much you want. Um, this is only good if you're trying to write, you know, single letters on its own. It's not that helpful if you're trying to do a full word because when we're doing an actual word, we're taking in account um, the spacing between the letters, right? So um, this is only good if you're trying to create just one letter on its own, okay? But it is quite helpful if you want a quick example of how all your different letters should look like based off your basic strokes. Okay, so you can apply the same thing, um, uh, you know, with this for your modern calligraphy um, writing, for example. Um, your ovals would have been maybe something like, oops, um, let me just try a different color. So we have a bit of contrast. Let's see this. Okay, your ovals would have been maybe like let me pick this color. Your ovals would have been maybe something like this, and then your underturns would have been something oops. Your underturn would have been something like this, very far apart. And you're gonna put them together um, in the same sort of method. Okay, so that's um, a little trick there that I There's use sometimes. Question. question from Disha. How can we duplicate? I think she missed the, the oh, part okay. for how to duplicate. Right, so to duplicate, um, okay, so let me go back to my writing layer, okay? So the writing layer is the layer that I've done all the basic strokes on, okay? And what you do is use the ribbon function um, select the, the the stroke that you want to duplicate. So let's see if I want to do this um, compound curve. I am going to trace over and find my compound curve. <clears throat> and right at the bottom of your screen, there should be like a copy and paste thing on the bar. Mm -hmm. And then um, unselect your ribbon tool. And then select... Uh, by now, you should have a new layer for your compound curve. So you can rename this as compound curve. Then you can easily move around with the move tool. Yes. Okay. 
Um, if you want to duplicate this layer that you have just created, you're basically just swiping to the left and then you can press duplicate and you get an, another layer of your content cafe. Nicole, did you um, answer a question about how to create your own brush just now? No. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No. Okay. Should we do the brush thing? Um, if you want to, or if you have other things to do, you want to do this at the end, also can. Okay, I'll do this at the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, with this, uh, we have created all the basic strokes. Let me just go to my guidelines here. Okay, my guidelines layer. I'm going to move my guidelines. I'm going to hide everything I've done up to this point. Okay, I'm going to use these guidelines that I have. And the next one I'm going to do will be much larger than what I did there. So what I can do with this current guidelines that I have is to enlarge it. So if you're two fingers, um, you just zoom out. <laughs> Same gesture as zooming out. Oops. Hold on, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Okay, so make sure your your function at the bottom is uniform. And if, you, if you're using a pen, actually, you can just hold on to these little points, the blue points here, and you can just, um, you know, drag your, um, your boundaries out so you have a much bigger um, guidelines to work with. Okay, and the ratio still is um, maintained um, with this piece that you've done here. Okay, so I'm going to unselect this move tool. And now I'm working much bigger. So I'm going to create a new layer to work with. Okay, we have a piece of writing here. Okay, so I'm going to rename this writing layer too so we're not confused. Writing to. Okay. So with this writing to, okay, so I have my brush here. So you can see the brush that I was using just now, if I were to write on such a much bigger guidelines, your thick lines are, <laughs> you can't even see your thick lines, right? So I'm going to toggle my brush size a little, make it much thicker. So my thick lines are more visible. Okay, that's great. So I'd like to work with this size. Um, this size I currently have now is around like 7%, 8% based on what I have right now. You have to toggle um, your settings a little bit. Okay, so let's say if I do a, a word, what word should I write? Hmm, that's a difficult thing. Um, let's say, oops. Second, let's say we do like, okay, simple three word, so three letter word, men. Okay, so with men, um, with men, we start with it over 10. Oops, I'm going to zoom in to do this. Okay, and then we have another overturn. Then end off with a compound curve. Okay, so we have a letter M there. Okay, so the next word is A. So with A, in terms of basic strokes, we're combining a oval with an underturn. Okay, so I'm going to do an oval shape first. Zooming all the way in, I'm going to do my oval shape. Oops. Okay, and then I do my underturn. Okay, the next step for A and connection is 
under 10 and then your letter N starts with A over 10, right? Why did I choose this letter? <laughs> okay. Might be confusing for some of you that have not done um, any sort of calligraphy before, but okay, let's just do this, all right? So your letter A would look like this. Okay, I'm not doing it calligraphy way. Your letter A will look like this and your letter N will look like this. Okay, so when you're combining these two letters together, you're basically just putting them together like this. So your AN would be A under 10 over 10 stop. Okay, and then you do your compound curve. So this is how your AN connection will look like on, on, on your iPad. Okay, so I'm going to do that, replicate this AN on here, okay? So let me do this again. Start with the oval. And then we do it under 10, over 10. Oops. Under 10, over 10. Okay, so it's the under 10 and over 10 shape there. Um, and then we end off with a compound curve. Depends on you. I like to end my writing in the middle of the accent. Um, so we have the word man here. <laughs> Thick and thin strokes. That's one word down. Okay. Um, so right now, uh, what I'm going to show you is how to change colors. Because if you want to change colors, you don't have to physically write the word again with a different um, color brush. So to do that, um, you can go back to your writing layer. Okay. And then what you have to do with this is to swipe towards the right side. That basically locks um, the layer and um, it selects all the areas that you have written. Okay, so use your finger or your pen, swipe right. Okay, and then um, what happens right now is if I get a brush with a different color, so I'll pick a different, very different, let's say red. Okay, I'm gonna pick a red color. And I'm going to color, oops. Okay, and then, hey, why it's not working? It's actually called alpha lock. So I, maybe it's my iPad, but um, there's this function for some of you it might be it might work so if you swipe right it should alpha lock the, the layer and if I color the red color in it will just color the spots that you have written so you don't necessarily have to change color with you know you don't have to change a different color to write all over again you just have to do it alpha lock so if the right swipe thing isn't working for you um, all you have to do is tap on the, the icon of your layer and then look for this thing called alpha lock, okay? And make sure it's ticked. And usually when I'm coloring in, I choose a much bigger brush size and I just color in the areas that I want. So let's say I color in here like that. Or let's say we do half. <laughs> okay, I'll do halfway like this. Okay. So um, with these sort of colors, um, you can work with something called um, Gaussian blur. So you can see that there's a very clear demarcation between your purple and your red color. So what you can do to smoothen out that line would be to pick something called, okay, so you look for this, is it on screen? Just a second. Okay, so on the top left-hand corner, there is this little wand with stars on it. It's called the adjustment um, tab. And you can look for something called um, Gaussian blur. Oops. Okay, and I pick the one with the pencil. And I can basically use my pencil and blur out the edges. 
like this. So there's no clean lines between the two different colors. You have a more, you know, a mixture of different colors in between. So it's a, a, this is a technique that's similar for, um, say, lettering work on, on iPad and Procreate. So uh, for iPad calligraphy, it, it's actually quite boring if you're working on a digital platform and you're not using colors. So <laughs> this would be actually really helpful. Um, so this is one technique that you can use. Let me just go back and show the guidelines. Okay. So maybe as we're doing this right now, um, if you are um, using the iPad Procreate, I'll have you do an, uh, the same exercise, but with a different color. Try this out on your own. I want to um, maybe have you guys try this out. It could be in modern calligraphy. <clears throat> I'll do one another version in modern calligraphy as well. Um, so you guys can see the difference. So let me call this the writing three. Okay, so I'm going to hide this layer with the word men, and I'm going to do my modern calligraphy style on writing three. Okay. So I'll pick the basic color black, so it's confusing. Then, um, let's see, maybe I'll have, I'll do one of your names. Me pick a name. Let me pick a name. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I do this. Oops. Brush size. Okay. Oh, we're writing much bigger. Did it spelled right? I always get this like little and anxiety when, when I'm looking at names because I'm so afraid I'll spell it wrongly. Okay, so I've worked Claire here. Um, and I'm going to remove the guidelines layer. Okay, then let's change the color of this. Okay, so I'm going to change the base color. First, I'm going to alpha lock this writing layer. Okay, and then I can pick a base color. Mm. Let's do this one. And I'm coloring in. Let's pick something with more contrast. Okay. And I will find another color. I'm just picking random colors. So So they're quite subtle colors. Maybe this but Oh, maybe we can do a gradient. So we start with a light color to a dark color. My to a much darker color. Okay, and then I'm going to blend them. So, little wand with a star icon there, Gaussian blur. I'm going to use my pencil to help me blend the colors together. Yep, so that's about it. It's quite subtle, but. Okay. 
that's it. Okay. Okay, so um, let me see. Brushes. So with the brushes, um, let me just show you what I've done with my brushes, okay? I have actually um, imported a custom brush that's for guide sheets. <laughs> I have this called the Copper Plate Guidelines here. Um, let me just remove all these first. Oh, it's not there anymore. I must have removed it. Oh, it's there. Okay. So I have this basic brush where I have a three to three ratio for my basic copper plate writing. Three. Get back to script. So I have three, two, three ratio. Yeah. So to create something like this, um, you basically have to import the shapes. Let me see. Ah, maybe I'll use the. Sorry. Let me just go back to my guideline brush so you can see how it looks like. Okay, so um, with the guideline brush, you actually have to import a shape, okay, um, and it's called the grain. So what you do is you can create a brush and come to this part called the grain and um, edit the grain source and you import. So you have to import a photo, you can import a file. So basically, Anything that you import needs to be um, whatever you, that you want um, to to replicate on on the on the iPad. So for me, um, the most practical way is to to create these guide sheets, right? So what you can actually do with this um, simple guide sheets that you've created just now, for example, this one like that, <laughs> is to export this um, guide sheets. Um, share image into a PNG, export it. So you have an image of your, your guidelines if you, you, that you have created. And then with the brush, when you come back to your grains, edit this source and import your guide sheets or whichever brush shape that you're trying to create. Then that will help you um, create a different look for your brushes or you know, um, a brushes that you're trying to, to work with. Um, like, okay. All right. So, um, so one other thing I want to cover is one of the things that are quite similar to Photoshop or Illustrator. So for this whole, um, Procreate segment, the concept of layers would be something that is, um, the same in Photoshop and Illustrator. We also have this whole concept of the alpha lock that we have done there for our for our word like men is pretty much like clipping mask it's a clipping mask similar to a clipping mask function in in photoshop so if you want something similar of this sort of look um, or you're trying to create a graphic that um, basically works within the boundaries of whatever that um, you have written or created in your imagery, um, you can look up for this um, function called clipping mask and maybe look up for YouTube videos on that. Um, that will be really helpful because sometimes um, in Procreate and in Photoshop, we they use sort of different names. So you uh, we might be a little bit more confused. There's actually a clipping mask function on Procreate. Let me just show you here. So if you tap on the icon of your um, layer and there is a clipping mask version like this. Okay, so what it does is 
Let me just use the um, compound curve as an example to show you what this does. on just a second. To find my script brush. Okay, you can color, oops, you can color your whole background or you can actually drop color on your, on your layer. So if I want a different color, let's say if I'm trying to use a lighter color, you can drag, drag your color icon onto your, on your layer and it fills up the whole space. Okay. And with that, I'm not sure why it's not working. Let me just change a different color so you can see. Okay, so the, the clipping mask function actually um, works in a way where it helps us change the background colors a little bit easier, easily. So what I've done is um, if I remove the clipping mask, the whole layer is actually colored red. Okay, and you got to make sure the colors or sorry, the, the, the bottom layer is um, the one that you want colored and the top layer would be the one that you add a clipping mask on. So I'm going to tap on the, the red icon, clipping mask, and you'll see that oops, my compound curve has turned red color. So you can create multiple different um, colors that you want, say blue. Pull it down and then clipping mask. And my compound curve color is blue in color. Okay, so that's how clipping masks work. It's quite similar to the alpha lock function, um, but I find that the alpha lock function is a lot more fun to work with because we get to blend all the colors together. Okay. All right. Any questions you guys have? No, so far no questions. Okay, so for the very last bit, I'm going to show you how I apply this um, iPad calligraphy on my actual projects because um, this iPad calligraphy work is actually quite helpful for me when I'm, whenever I'm doing a mock-up for, for my projects. So let me show you this one here, which I've done very, very recently. Okay, here. It's, I'm trying to do a mock-up on a shoe. <laughs> I'm trying to do a writing mock-up on a shoe. So whenever we do our writing, um, everything is flat. So here's an example. See if I do a piece of writing here, which is, um, oops, let me get the calligraphy brush out. Okay, let's see, I do a, just a random writing here, so. And then, what's the next letter should we do? T. Okay, so I have my initials there. I'm going to move this here so you can see clearly. 
So I'm trying to mock up on this pair of shoes that I have there. Okay. And basically, you can see that the shoe has a curvature on it. So to, to make it more realistic, um, what you can do is to use the moving tool function. So you use move tool. And then right at the bottom of your screen, there is a tab called distort. Okay, by distorting this, you can hold, use your pen and hold on to any of the anchor points of your, um, you know, boundary and tweak it. So it's, it has gotten more of a perspective look to your piece. So right now with this, um, you can see that the shoe is a bit curved. So, See if I do it at the side. See the side of the shoe is a bit curved, so I need to change the the anchor point so so my writing curves a little bit together as well. Oh, I just realized my anchor points are not showing up on the on the sharing screen. But if you look on the screen where, where my hands are moving, you see that there are little blue points at the corner. Okay, so that's where the anchor points are and you, you tweak them. You can see by tweaking them, um, my, my name is a little bit more curved. Um, you can make it a little bit more exaggerated as well, depending on the type of um, uh, surface that you're trying to work with. So this is a very quick way of, of doing mock-ups on, on products. Uh, with your calligraphy writing. Um, yeah, so let me show you this one. I did this recently as well. So it's a, it's a name mock-up on, on a red packet box. So this, this person was going to get married soon. And then, um, so she wanted to see how the uh, writing would look like if I uh, if I were to do it on, on her red packet box. So this name that you see here is done in, um, on, on Procreate and I've written them directly on it. So because the, the box is slightly slanted, so I used the distort function to help me sort of um, tweak the, the angle of the writing a little bit so it's a little bit more realistic. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you can apply your um, iPad calligraphy and in, into like actual the application. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that's all that I'm gonna cover today. If you have any more questions, you can um let. Thanks, Nicole. That's really interesting. A lot of cheating going on. <laughs> Well, that's, that's appropriate for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, I I usually, I mean, for me, most of the time I spend, I'd say seventy percent of my time is more on like paper writing. Mm. But the 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 work on Procreate is actually very helpful when I'm trying to do mockups mm. because sometimes, for example, I might have clients that come to me and they say, "Oh, um, I have this cut and only one cut. You cannot mess it up." <laughs> show me how it looks like first so this is where um having you know appropriate actually is very helpful because you can do the mock-up digitally and send it over and they can see before they actually approve mm. that that gives you um yeah so it's a lot easier compared to um if they were to see the final look and say hey this is not what i was expecting <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible yeah does anybody have any other questions for Nicole? No, no more questions? <sighs> so just now we were saying that it's possible to use this actually to create um, like teaching notes, right? I mean, you can to, to create practice sheets and all that because you can just create the letters and repeat them forever. Yes, and that's right. Yeah, right. so it's good. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Okay. You have